Do you know that Terijam has been known to exist for, for more than 3000 years? The first documentation of a surgical excision was around 500 to 1000 BC. The concept of recurrence after Terijam removal is known to us for a long time. Despite all the advancements in the surgical field, recurrence of Terijam is still a matter of concern. The so-called ideal technique with the least risks of recurrence and side effects is yet to be found. In this video, we would like to discuss various treatment options for the management of Terijim. You can find the links to other videos on similar topics in the description of this video. You can also find the links to useful instruments in the description of the video. A recent study from Thailand, published in the year 2019, has reviewed the perspectives of ophthalmologists on this issue. The authors wanted to identify the important factors affecting the choice of surgery in a terrigen patient. The study reported that the most practiced methods were the bare sclera technique and conjunctival autograph in primary and recurrent terrigia. In both types of terrigia, the majority of ophthalmologists indicated that they would not consider adjuvant therapy. The reluctance to use adjuvant therapy was attributed to concerns regarding the potential complications and overall inexperience with the surgical techniques. The study also highlighted the fact that the lack of availability of amniotic membranes and the high cost of fibrin glue was the reason for their infrequent usage. The study reported that recurrence of terrigem was the most common late postoperative complication, reported by over three-fourths of the ophthalmologists. Ophthalmologists are trying to find the ideal method of managing both primary and recurrent pterygia. The most commonly employed techniques would include the various conjunctival grafting with or without limbal tissue. The grafts are often fixed with either sutures, fibrin glue, or even autologous blood or fibrin. Beta irradiation is rarely used nowadays, but antimetabolites such as mitomycin C and 5 fluorouracil are gaining popularity. Various modes of applications have been used. It is used either intraoperatively as a single dose or postoperatively as subconjunctival injections or drops. A 2019 randomized controlled clinical trial has found that mitomycin C used in conjunction with grafts has lower pterygium recurrences when compared with bare sclera excision alone. In spite of this distinct advantage, concerns regarding the potential complications of mitomycin C often keep the surgeons at bay. The complications are delayed conjunctival healing, scleromalacia, and necrotizing scleritis. Other important issues in adjuvant therapy determination include the experience of the surgeon, the available operative time, the need for normal conjunctival preservation, and limited tissue availability. Amniotic membrane has been used as an alternative to conjunctival as grafting material, acting as a substrate transplant. Multiple studies have been conducted on the use of amniotic membranes for primary terrigen. Though earlier reported recurrence rate was as high as 60% of the operated patients, recent studies yielded more acceptable rates between 14-18%. to A systematic review of controlled trials containing more than 1900 eyes, published in the year 2017 has concluded that amniotic membranes are inferior to conjunctival autograph in preventing terrigen recurrence. But if you add intraoperative MMC with an amniotic membrane, the combination reduces the recurrence rate to as low as 6%. MMC is an anti-metabolite that inhibits pterygium cell proliferation and migration. This medication has been widely studied as an adjuvant in pterygium surgery. Earlier reports have reported the incidence of spheral melting ranging from 3 to 19%. Newer protocols of MMC application have reported a significant decline in the incidence of scleral melting. Studies reporting on the long-term data on this regime also confirmed its safety at 10 years. In addition to preservation of surrounding healthy conjunctiva, use of MMC reduces the duration of operation in surgery which is an important concern in modern-day ophthalmology practice. Subconjunctival administration of antivascular endothelial growth factor anti -VAGF, as an adjuvant in pterygium surgery has been evaluated. A handful of meta-analyses done so far have reported conflicting conclusions on its, its role in pterygium management. 
Despite the overall safety of bevacizumab, more credible scientific evidence is required to establish anti-PADF agents in the management of terigen. In addition, the relatively high cost of anti-PADF may be a prohibitive factor in poor patients. A recent strategy in teratum surgery would include the use of mini simple limbal epithelial transplant mini SLAT. A few published studies evaluated the use of mini SLAT or SLAT in teratum surgery with promising results. More data from larger studies and preferably controlled trials are required to evaluate the merits of this technique. In conclusion, there is nothing like a treatment of choice for treating teratum. The potential complications of each of the treatment modalities has to be kept in mind before deciding the treatment plan for management of teratum. Moreover, the need to gain proficient experience with various approaches cannot be overemphasized. Hope you find the video useful. Please let us know in the comments regarding other techniques of management of teratum. Please let us know the other topics on which you would like to see similar videos. Check the description below for a link to other useful videos and instruments mentioned in the video.